to assess my level, we are actually going to look at I will get rid of the native ability. I have pretty much integrated grammar in my system. I can express my opinions logically in writing. Character recognition, character reading. It is November and really my focus this month is... Minasan konnichiwa, Ali des. My name is Ali. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna talk about my current level in Japanese. So in July this year, I sat and passed the JLPT N1. So this is the highest level of the Japanese language proficiency test. And since then, I actually took a little break from studying and just enjoyed using my new and improved Japanese language abilities all during the month of October while I was traveling around Japan. But now it is November and really my focus this month is going to be getting back into a study routine for Japanese. This is going to be a process for me to get back into a study routine because of course now that I'm done with the JLPT, I have new goals and new focus for my Japanese language study and so I really wanted to bring you guys along with me on this journey. That's why I have planned a short series of videos to bring you along with me on this process on setting language study goals. Today is the first video and the first step in the process and we're going to examine what my current level in Japanese is to see what we are working with. Alright, so to assess my level, we are actually going to look at the JLPT can do self-evaluation list and then attribute myself a fluency label based on my self-evaluation. So the five labels when it comes to language ability are basic. So that would be the knowledge of vocabulary word ability to speak simple phrases or sentences and elementary reading and writing skills. Conversant, an intermediate level of language where you may be skilled in carrying through conversations, but there is greater formality and less familiarity compared to a native and fluent speaker. Reading and writing skills may or may not be at the same level. Fluent, the ability to speak the language near perfect, almost like a native, but may require more concentration to communicate thoughts, idioms and slang, advanced reading and writing skills. Native speaker, this applies to the first language you learn, the one that dominated your youth and therefore the language you primarily choose to think, read and write in. And then bilingual, the ability to use two languages with equal fluency. You may be a native speaker of one language and only fluent or conversant in the second. For myself with Japanese, I will get rid of the native ability since it doesn't apply to me. So the common four language skills are listening, speaking, reading and writing and for Japanese there is an additional ability which is very linked to all four common language skills which is kanji skills so this is composed of character recognition character reading and character writing okay so let's start with the self-evaluation then let's start with my listening level so in broad terms i would say that i can pretty much understand anything i'm being told or anything i listen to and in pretty much any type of circumstances so it can be in real life through video or even through audio i don't really have much trouble now understanding what is being said in japanese of course i will have trouble understanding certain accents or certain ways to speak, but broadly I am quite confident with my listening ability. Let's take a closer look at the can-do self-evaluation list and then assess what my level actually is. I'm going to be quickly reading each of the sections and I'm just going to tell you where I feel my level is for each of them. So when it comes to listening, category 1. I can understand the main points of TV news about politics, economics, etc. Right, so we're starting with the most difficult one. And I would say that I am quite comfortable with this now, even though I lack some vocab, which I still need to look for when I listen to the news. 
I can understand the general content when I engage in conversations on current topics covered by the media. Again, I understand. However, engaging in conversations, this would be difficult because I would lack some of the vocab. I can understand the general content of speeches in formal situations, welcome parties, etc. Yes, there is no problem about this. I can totally understand. I can generally understand announcements about unpredictable occurrences, example, accidents, etc. Yes. Specifically, I've trained myself to really understand the most important points. So we, if we're talking about accidents, I want to be able to understand like how many people were injured or worse and what actually happened, what was the cause. I can understand the content of inquiries about my work or specialized field. Yes, absolutely. And I have tested that in real life. Until recently, I was working as an in-house lawyer for a, an international company and I was discussing my work and specifically contract drafting in company law and general business law and I was pretty much okay with that. I can understand the general content of lectures and speeches given on themes I am concerned about. Yes, absolutely. And this is also something I've trained myself to do. I can follow discussions when I participate in meetings at school or work. Absolutely. No problem with that. I can understand the general content of discussions and debates on themes I am concerned about. Yes, again, absolutely. I can understand the general content of TV programs covering familiar everyday topics, cooking, travel. Absolutely no problem now with that. I can follow discussions on familiar everyday topics, travel plans, preparations for parties when I participate in meetings. Yes, absolutely. No problem. I can generally understand TV dramas and movies in standard Japanese. Yes, absolutely. I can get necessary information from explanations about products at stores. Yes, kind of. I must be honest here, it bores me to death, so I would not make much efforts to really, really understand 100% and just grasp broadly what's being said. I can generally understand announcements at stations and department stores. Yes, this is something I'm comfortable with now. I wasn't really comfortable with that before I sat the JLPT N1 though. So yeah, I must say this is a recent skill I, I acquired. I can understand the general content when I engage in small talk and free conversations with people around me. Yes, of course. I can understand simple walking directions and directions for public transportation transportation yes however you know when the explanation itself is difficult i mean it doesn't matter in which language you tell me i will struggle <laughs> following your instructions i can generally understand conversations on familiar everyday topics hobbies food weekend plans yes of course when i am given simple instructions i can understand what is required of me yes in general i mean it will depend on the circumstance if i am very stressed about the kind of instructions that are given to me. Uh, for example, if it's about medical issues, maybe my anxiety would get mixed up with my thoughts, you know, and I would miss part of it. I would think that in general, I'm okay with that, but it, it, I think it does depend on the circumstances. I can understand instructions from my teacher, such as meeting times and place. So I would replace here in this case, teacher by boss. Since I have more experience speaking Japanese at work and not at uni, absolutely no problem with that. I can understand phrases commonly used at stores, post offices and stations. Yes, of course, but that's since I live here in Japan. So I've been living here for one year and I've developed this ability for maybe the last six months. I can understand simple self-introductions by teachers and friends in classrooms. So again, replacing that with the working environment. Yes, uh, this was no issue with my colleagues and bosses at work. All right, so that's it for the self-evaluation list. And now that I've seen all of that, I'm even more confident now with my listening abilities since I think I'm pretty much okay in any type of circumstances. So I would say that I am at fluent level in terms of listening skills. In my case, I would say that I know where the gaps are. Mostly it's related to vocab. I have pretty much integrated grammar <laughs> in my system. So I'm okay with sentence structure in general, but vocab is still difficult. There is a lot of vocab to learn in Japanese language and I'm definitely not done with that at all. All right, now let's move on to speaking. 
Right, so my speaking level now, in broad terms, before I go into the details of the list, I think my speaking level is very much linked to my listening level because I'm at that level now with Japanese where I can understand what I hear and pretty much instantly digest it and then repeat it without much effort. But then when it comes to expressing myself out of the blue on subjects I have little vocab on or I have no prior experience of hearing about, then I would struggle quite a bit actually. So I would say it's like a 50-50 kind of situation. It really depends on the circumstances. And then looking at the list specifically, so let's start from the top. I can express my opinion in a logical manner when I join in discussions and debates on topics I'm concerned about. So this is precisely one of the gaps I am aware I have at the moment in my speaking ability, specifically about the logical manner part. I have trouble linking Linking sentences together in a more complex kind of structure, if that makes sense. So if I want to explain something, persuade someone about something I think, something I know, and I need to explain all of that in a logical manner, I would have a lot of trouble doing that. So I know this is one of the gaps I have. I can ask questions and express my opinion about current topics covered by the media. Not very much. Also because I don't have a lot of experience doing that, honestly, so I need to train myself more more about that. I can explain the background and cause of unpredictable occurrences, accidents, etc. I have no experience of that, so I wouldn't know how I would react in that circumstance. I would know which words to use, but then with the anxiety or the panic, I really wouldn't know right now whether or not I would be able to express myself in this kind of circumstance. I can use either polite or casual Japanese according to the situation and the person I'm speaking with. Yes, this is something I have trained myself to do, specifically in the recent two years. I am now able to switch between language levels pretty easily. At least it's much better than what it was before. I can give a brief description of the storyline of a movie I've seen or a book I have read recently. I'm still struggling with that a lot. This is also a gap I have in my knowledge. I can express my agreement or disagreement of others' opinions in class discussions and tell its reason. You would have to replace class with working environment and let's say meetings for example. That would still be difficult for me to do. If I prepare in advance, I can give a presentation on a subject I specialize in or I know well. Yes, absolutely. And I also have experience with that at work. I can talk with friends and colleagues about travel plans or party preparations. Yes, absolutely. No problem with that. I can speak of my expectations and experiences at job interviews, working hours, work experience. Mm, not very much. I would like the vocab to do that, so I would need to train specifically for this. I can give walking directions and directions for public transportation to locations I know well. To locations I know well, yes, but I would struggle still. If I prepare in advance, I can make a short speech in formal situations such as my own farewell party. Yes, I can do that. I can ask questions about things I want to buy and explain my wishes and conditions. Mm. Yes, yes, I, I do have experience doing that. Uh, you know, talking uh, to store clerks uh, about the kind of shoes I want, for example, let's say. I have a few experiences of that, so yeah, I can do that. I can tell that I would be late or absent by telephone. Yes, I can do that. I can join in conversations on familiar everyday topics, hobbies, weekend plans, absolutely. I can ask when is convenient for the other person and decide the day and time to meet. Yes, absolutely. I can express feelings such as surprise and joy and the reasons for them. Yes, no problem. I can describe my room. No problem. I can talk about my hobbies and interests. Yes, Yes, absolutely. I can engage in simple communication using phrases commonly used at stores, post offices and stations. Yes, I can. I can introduce myself and answer simple questions about myself. Yes, I can, but I hate introducing myself and the uh, Jiko Shokai culture in Japan is stressing me out. Uh, I am too much of an introvert for this kind of stuff, honestly. But otherwise, yes, I can. All right, so here we go with the speaking ability and I would say that the label that is accurate for this skill for me would be conversant. I am definitely not fluent. It's, as I said, as you saw, it was pretty much a 50-50 kind of situation there. There are some things I can't do yet and I know I can't. And I know that these are gaps and I must study hard to bridge these gaps because right now 
I don't feel very, very comfortable or as comfortable as I could be. So yeah, definitely conversant. I still have a lot to study there. Reading level now. So in broad terms, again, my reading level is, I think, as high as it can be right now. My N1 studies really helped me there since I had to literally train myself to read even more and even faster and even more accurately for the exam. My vocab specifically has expanded a lot, again, thanks to my preparation for the exam and in general, just living in Japan. And for pleasure, uh, you, you guys know I read a lot, I immerse a lot. That's my favorite kind of immersion, reading in Japanese. And I read pretty much anything I can get my hands on. So really, I think my reading ability is, as I said, as high as it can be. But now let's see what the can-do self-evaluation list tells us about reading abilities. All right, I can understand the main points of articles on politics, economics, etc. in newspapers and magazines. Yes, I can. And I have worked very hard to get to that point, let me tell you. I can understand the points, opinions and argument structure of editorial columns, examples in newspapers. Yes, I can. I can read novels, understanding the feelings of the characters and the storyline. Yes, I can. I can understand what the author wants to say in narrative essays. I mean, that's definitely something I was trained to do for my N1 preparation, so I'm confident there. And I would definitely have an opinion on what I think the author wants to say. Uh, but then whether or not I'm accurately analyzing this is another topic, I think. I can understand the main ideas of academic technical texts on topics I am concerned about. Yes, absolutely. Again, this is something I've worked on a lot. So yes, I'm very happy to say now I can understand. Can understand the content of official letters and emails written in polite Japanese. No problem. I can understand inquiries and requests from business partners. Mm, I have no experience there, but I guess yes. I can understand the content of articles in newspapers and magazines written about familiar everyday topics. Yes, absolutely. I can get necessary information from travel guidebooks and magazines about entering university or finding jobs. Yes, I can. I can understand the definitions provided in general Japanese Japanese dictionaries. I have almost no experience using them. I know I, I, I should start using them actually, but so far in the few instances I've used a Japanese Japanese dictionary, I could understand without any issue. So yeah, I guess yes. I can get necessary information about the brochures of products, product features, etc. Yes, of course. I can understand the main storylines of short stories. Yes. I can understand postcards and emails from my acquaintances and friends. Yes, of course. I can get necessary information, lecture, meeting schedule, etc. From, from notice boards at school or work. Yes, I can. I can understand the sale dates and prices listed in newspaper advertisements and flyers. Yes, I can. I can read train schedules and guide signs at stations in order to determine what time to board my train. Yes, I can. No problem there. I can read and understand New Year's and birthday cards. I think I can. I can understand simple memos. Yes, of course. I can understand simple instructions with pictures, how to put out trash, how to prepare meals. Yes, I can. I can understand my appointment day and time from appointment reservation charts at my school, etc. Yes, no problem there. I think I was almost at 100% there. So I would say that my reading ability is like between fluent and bilingual. And my next step is going to be bringing it to bilingual level, honestly, because I think I can reach that level of fluency, specifically because I have the interest to do so. I really enjoy reading in Japanese. It's like one of my favorite things to do. Definitely, I will try to do that. Okay, so now let's look at my writing level. So generally speaking, I basically write as I speak. And since I have conversant level in my speaking ability, I would say that then my writing level is pretty low. Except for email writing, I have no notion of formal or academic writing in Japanese. So it's just pretty low, I think. But let's look at the list in detail. 
All right, the first one will be I can express my opinions logically in writing. This is something I struggle with a lot and I really want to improve there. And this is the exact same thing I want to improve on orally as well when I speak. I can write explanations about unpredictable occurrences, example, accidents. I don't think I can. I can write instructions such as how to make meals and how to use machines. Mm. Yes, I think I could, but I would need to look up some of the vocab. I can write reports on fields I'm concerned about. I don't think so. Again, I, I have no experience doing that, so I don't think I can. I can write letters and emails using basic polite Japanese to senior acquaintances, examples, teachers, or in my case, bosses, for example, at work. And yes, I can. No problem. I can write a short speech for my farewell party. Yes, I think I could do that, even though I have no experience doing that. I can write statements of purpose for school or work. Yes, I think I can. I can summarize the storyline of a book I have read or a movie I have seen recently. So in writing, I told you uh, earlier that speaking, I would have trouble doing that. I would look for my words a lot. But in writing, I think I could do that. In fact, I have done that in the past. I can express my opinions in writing, giving reasons. Yes, I can. It will not be fluent, but I can. I can briefly write about my experiences and impressions about them. Yes, I can. I can write letters and emails to apologize to convey appreciation to acquaintances. Yes, I can. I can describe my day-to-day -day life in writing. Yeah, no problem. I can briefly write about my future plans and wishes, summer vacation travel, work I want to do. Yes, I think I can. I can write short entries in a diary. Yes, I can. I can write simple memos to my friends and colleagues. Yes, I can. I can briefly write about familiar topics such as my family and town. Yes, I think I can. I can write my schedule in short words on schedule boards or calendars. Yes, I can. I do it every week, actually. I can write short sentences for birthday and thank you cards. Yes, I can. I can write a simple self-introduction. Yes, I can and I have. I can write my name, country, examples in forms. Yes, oh my gosh, I can and I have done that a lot. <laughs> okay, so it turns out I can actually do more than what I thought I could do. So I'm a bit surprised there. And I think that actually when it comes to typing, not actually writing by hand, because then I will have much more difficulties, but we're going to come to that in a second. If I can type what I write based on that list we just saw, then I, I think my level would be conversant in writing. So yeah, I am happily surprised that I wouldn't have thought that. So yeah. <laughs> Okay, and we are almost done, guys. Let's talk about my kanji level. There is no can-do self-evaluation list for kanji skills, but I'm just going to do this very simply. So as I said earlier, it has three components. It has the recognition component, the reading component, and the writing component. So it's going to be pretty quick. My recognition level is very high. So kanji recognition again is just the ability to recognize the, the kanji itself and know its meaning even though you can't necessarily read the kanji so you don't know exactly how the word itself is read or the kanji itself. So I separate the two and my recognition level is higher than my reading level and my reading level is quite high but I would say that it's right at fluent level not higher. And then my writing level is basically close to zero. So it's not even, it's not even basic. It's like before basic. All right. So there you have it, guys. That's my level in Japanese currently. So what I did today with you guys, I would really like for it to encourage you to do the same and assess your own level. The link to the can do self-evaluation list will be in the description below and of course it can apply to any language it doesn't have to apply to Japanese only so definitely go ahead and use that for yourself so with the detailed self-analysis of where my level is right now in Japanese I can now move on to the next step which will be redefining my goals for my Japanese study and I will talk to you about it in my next video of this series so I hope you're excited for that but anyway that's it for today's video guys i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you next week in a new video bye bye, bye, -bye.